Germdas is the way that I think about the order of operations for arithmetic and algebra. If mathematics is a language, then Germdas is its grammar. It provides structure to equations so that we can read and understand them, just like sentences. Eventually, we want Germdas to be automatic, in the same way that when you speak in your native language, you intuitively know the order of the words. This lesson is meant for students who have already spent a good amount of time solving algebra equations in school. My goal is to show you how Germdas can help you organize your algebra so that you make fewer careless mistakes. Let's start by looking at what Germdas stands for. G is for groupings, E is for exponents, R is for radicals, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. There are two main reasons why I like Germdas better than PEMDAS. First, the G for groupings is more inclusive than the P for parentheses. There are lots of cases in math where we have groups of numbers and letters that need to be treated with special rules, and many of these groups will not have parentheses. Plus, there are lots of cases where we use parentheses to stay organized without creating special groups. The other reason I prefer Germdas is that all of the operations come in pairs. Exponents and radicals go together because they're basically the same thing. Multiplication and division are basically the same thing. And addition and subtraction, if you understand how negative numbers work, are basically the same thing. The pairings also remind us which operations cancel each other out when solving an equation. For example, multiplication cancels out division. Let's look at a complex yet common situation where we need to follow the order of operations to simplify an expression. You probably recognize that this is the quadratic formula. I've already substituted the values of a, b, and c, so we just need to simplify to find the values of x. We should start by looking for groupings, and there's a big one underneath the radical. We should treat this like its own mini expression, and it will get its own mini germdas. Are there any exponents or radicals? Yes, we can square the four to get 16. Is there any multiplication or division? Yes, the right side has a bunch of multiplication. Now remember that even though we read this as 16 minus four times one times negative 32, doing multiplication first turns that minus into a negative that's attached to the four. So negative four times one times negative 32 is 128. Now we're just left with addition and subtraction and 16 plus 128 is 144. Now that we've completely simplified this grouping, we can put it back into the main equation. Notice that I also simplified another grouping on the bottom of the fraction, but that one was easy because two times one is two. If we return to our main germdas, we could move on to exponents and radicals to quickly simplify radical 144 as 12. Our next step would be multiplication and division. So we might be tempted to divide something on the top by two, but we can't because the top of the fraction is another grouping. We have to simplify that with its own mini germdas first. Luckily, this grouping is just simple addition and subtraction. You probably remember that the quadratic formula often splits into two separate equations. At this point, we'll stop using the plus or minus symbol and instead break this apart into two equations for negative four plus 12 and negative four minus 12. The addition gives us eight and negative 16. We can put those simplified groupings back into the main equation. And now we're able to do the division that we couldn't do before. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. We could move on to addition and subtraction, but there's nothing left to do. We have completely simplified our equation down to the two solutions, 4 and negative 8. At first, this might seem like a very complicated way to do math, but I promise that it becomes automatic with practice. Plus, unless you're failing your algebra class in school, you're already doing a version of Germdas whenever you do math. Basically, you follow the Germdas order of operations every time you simplify arithmetic. Germdas reminds us to start with any groupings, then to simplify any exponents and radicals, then multiplication and division, and finally addition and subtraction. But did you know that you can also use Germdas to solve algebra equations? We just need to go backwards through the word, which makes sense since algebra is kind of like backwards math. Our goals change a little bit, but the overall idea is the same. We need to solve equations in a particular order, and solving occurs whenever we do something to both sides of an equal sign. Even though you might have learned quadratic formula in algebra class, what we just did in that last example was not algebra. All of it was arithmetic. Every step happened on just one side of the equation. When we work on both sides, our overall goal is to solve by canceling out operations that we don't want. When we do addition and subtraction, our goal is to make zeros. When we do multiplication and division, our goal is to make ones. And when we have exponents and radicals, our goal is to make them go away. Groupings make things a lot harder, but let's apply Germdas to a very simple algebra equation to see how it works. 
20 minus 5x equals 10. Since I can't simplify either side of the equation, I can't do any arithmetic, so I'll have to use algebra. We go through germ dots backwards, so we start at the bottom. Is anything attached to the x with addition or subtraction? Yes, the 20 is attached through subtraction, so I'm going to subtract 20 to make it go away, but I have to do this operation on both sides of the equation. I end up with 0 minus 5x equals negative 10. Notice that even though the 20 is attached with subtraction, I did not cancel it out with addition. That's because my goal for addition and subtraction is to make zeros. The equation had a positive 20, so I minus 20 to make zero. And since a zero in this new equation doesn't do anything, we don't bother writing it. Now, is anything attached to the x with multiplication or division? Yes, the negative 5 is being multiplied, so we should divide by negative 5 to cancel it out and make a 1. And of course, we have to divide on both sides of the equation. We get 1x equals 2. And since the 1 in front of the x doesn't really do anything, we erase it. There are no exponents or radicals, so we've got our answer that x equals 2. This is a simple situation where the correct order of operations has probably become automatic for you already, but germdas can be very helpful when an equation has a lot going on. Groupings become very important, and we'll need to be flexible with how we use them. Sometimes we need to break groupings apart, but other times we need to make our own groupings to help us solve. You've already learned a lot of the moves that we use for groupings, like distribution, foiling, and factoring. Here's a good example of the kind of crazy algebra question where we would need to be very careful with the order of operations if we wanted to solve it correctly. To be clear, I would solve an equation like this on the SAT by simply typing it into the Desmos calculator. But I will make a separate addendum to this lesson where I will solve this equation by hand using germdas in more detail. But here's the quick version of how we'd solve this. First, we'd simplify each side of the equation separately, moving through germdas forward from left to right. At a certain point, each side of the equation will be stuck, where we can't combine any more terms. On the left, we can't combine the 15 and negative 1 because the 15 is stuck in a grouping under the radical. On the right, the x and the 2 are different kinds of terms. This is where we would start doing algebra by adding 1 to both sides to get the grouping under the radical completely by itself. Our next move would then be to break the radical on the left by squaring both sides of the equation but that will also make a grouping on the right side that we will also break by foiling or expanding the x plus 3. We'll then work through germdas backwards, using algebra to move terms across the equal sign. Eventually, we'll get to a point where we want to make groupings by factoring to solve the quadratic equation. If this is confusing, don't worry. Germdas is going to help you work your way up to this level of algebra. For now, use this cheat sheet to start organizing the way you think about equations. In a way, this picture summarizes most of the math that you learn in high school. If you often make careless math mistakes, it might be because you never really learned the order of operations. Hopefully this lesson and germdas give you a stronger foundation to build on. Thanks for watching.